another year and uh, this cannonball is going to be absolutely amazing this year, even bigger and better. I mean, last year was big, but this year is going to be absolutely massive. I mean, already we've more or less, all the spaces are gone and there's a waiting list to get on. So it's just going to be incredible this year. Well, I've managed to grab the main man himself, Mr. Alan Bannon. Alan, thank you for having us here and thank you for talking to us. Thank you, Maureen. Alan, will you tell me how did the cannonball thing get started in the first place? It got started uh, last May. We pulled it together in a very short space of time. So uh, from May to September we pulled it together. So straight after last year's event we started organising this year. So the idea came from the movie Cannonball and there is similar road trips around Europe. So I decided to organise one in Ireland for Bardstown as a fundraiser. An event like this, you would have to have a lot of sponsors involved. Who has got involved with you? Well, there is a lot of cost involving an event like this. I mean, uh, we were very fortunate this year. We've had a number of sponsors come back from last year. Atlas Tires, Fraser Oil, um, Michelle Jewellers from Cork, Hertz, Zuki, Leisure Grow, and Lily's Burdell, which are having our venue here tonight. Our main sponsor, which we're delighted with, is Stobart Ireland. So we're thrilled to have them as our main and entitled sponsor. Well, I've managed to grab Father Willie. He's a very famous man on the Cannibal Run. And he manages to keep us all very faithful. Father Willie, welcome. Hi, good evening. How are you? Grand, lovely girl you are. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm here this evening as a guest with the Cannonball Run, as I, I do uh, always for the weekend of the festival. We do bless the cars and we say mass. They're regularly on because there'll be a lot of misbehaving between couples on the weekend in question. But I have to say, it's a pleasure to be here this evening here with friends and family that, uh, you know, and, and ladies like yourself. And come here till I tell you, so you're already in set, are you going to be performing any weddings on that weekend? Uh, on the weekend I think I was uh, notified yesterday morning in that lovely place, uh, that lovely uh, TV uh, firm, uh, TV3, I was asked uh, what we could provide on the weekend as a couple, uh, maybe, and the thing about it is I informed maybe if we could find a couple in Ireland that were maybe just after recently getting married to come with me for the weekend in their cloths, we'll say the wedding gown before they consummate the marriage and maybe, con you know, no, well sorry, not consummate it, but to get together of the weekend in, uh, we'll say, the cannonball, it would be marvellous of a kind of a giveaway weekend, sorry. Richie, and you're on the weekend with us again this I'm year. A gay lover, apparently. <laughs> My child is only a young man starting <laughs> off in life, you know. Okay, this is Vesta, and she's um, a little female boa, and she was mascot on the cannibal last year, and she came. <laughs> yeah. She came for the three days, or the two days, and uh, came all the car rides and came down to dinner every night and basically just became the mascot. <laughs> Even when the, when the guard stopped us, this is who was pulled out. <laughs> well, I've managed to grab Sinead Desmond herself from TV3, who is actually coming on the Cannonball Run with us. Are you looking forward to it? I'm very, very excited. I'm a Cannonball Run virgin, and I'm thrilled because I have an incredibly fast car it's an Audi R8. And I went home in all innocence and said to Davey, do you know what an Audi R8 is? And he went, what? <laughs> and I said, I said, I think that's what we're doing. He said, no, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. And I rang and I checked and they said, yeah, it is. And I said, no, it is. And he went, fantastic. So he's very, very excited. And I am very excited because I didn't know that much about the whole event. It is an amazing event. Not only do you get to see the best of Ireland that Ireland has to offer, but you get to do incredible things like these oyster festival trips on the river, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it's all, of course, for Barrettstown, which is probably the most deserving charity out there at the moment. So I'm very excited, and that's why I'm here, to whip up excitement, because we're aiming to raise over 200,000 this year. We want to increase on last year's, and we've got a huge amount of entries this year, so we should do it, but that doesn't mean that people at home shouldn't get involved. Barrettstown.org, log on, get involved. Three days of great fun and some fabulous cars, which are lost on me. I hate to say it, I'm not a car head, but for anyone who is, it is 
heaven, apparently, absolute heaven. We had some cars in on Ireland AM the other day, a Bentley Continental and an Aston Martin Vantage and all the rest of it. And we, I was in the Continental and I pressed the start button and I was revving it the whole way through thinking, this is great for telly. And at the end of it, the owner said, I hope you realise you burned about 100 euros worth of fuel there. I was like, I'm sorry, I'm really sorry. Well, I'm delighted to grab the main man himself from Barrettstown and Mr. Finn Brannock. Finn, thank you for talking to me. Delighted to have a chat with you. Uh, you like my new friend? No, not really. <laughs> Finn, will you tell me what does the whole cannonball run mean to Barrettstown? Well, it, it means a lot of things, really. I, I suppose it's a visible sign of, of people's support for the work which we do. It also generates an enormous sum of money to allow us to run the camps and bring children from 22, 23 European countries, all of the UK, the whole of Ireland, and most of the European countries to Barrettstown, free of charge, entirely free of charge. And on top of that, of course, there's great publicity surrounding it. So, it's There is unbelievable publicity. Can you tell me, if you have any little stories to tell me about Barrettstown, let us know what Barrettstown is all about. Well, I spent um, over 30 years of my life looking after children with cancer. and. Um, it's pretty tough to be a young person and to have cancer. Your mum and dad are terrified and that's not a good thing for you to see as a child. You learn at a very young age that you might die yourself and that's a big burden to carry as a child. And of course, much of normal childhood is shut out from you. You can't go to school with your pals, you can't play contact sports because your blood is weak. And, and essentially, children in that, in that situation tend to lose confidence and belief in themselves. And Barrettstown restores that through so really getting the children to step outside their, their comfort zone. A uh, comfort zone that's really built around them by parents who are very overprotective. So these kids, uh, when they come to Barrettstown, instead of being told, no, you can't do something, parents would say, you can't go to the cinema because you might pick up an infection, or you can't go to a disco again because your immune system is down, or you can't play football because your platelets are low and you might have a hemorrhage. And instead of that, in Barrettstown, they're told, yes, yes, you can do this, yes, you can do that. And what they do is they take on challenges. I'll give you an example. We had a boy from the UK last year, a teenager of about 15 years of age, and uh, he was blinded by his tumour, which had caused pressure on the nerves going to the eye. So he had no sight whatsoever. And we have a high ropes. So we have lots of facilities there with the high ropes. Um, he walked on there with lots of other teenagers who described what the high ropes were like. And, um, and they, they tried to encourage him to climb up these the high ropes are up, up the pole, which is 45, 50 foot off the ground. And they persuaded him to have a go, totally blind, and he climbed up to the top, stood at the top of the pole, and then they said, now if you turn slightly to your right, which he did, there's a trapeze bar about seven or eight feet away from you, and if you dive from the pole and stretch out your hands, you might catch it, and he did, and caught it. And we lowered him to the ground, and you should see the look on that boy's face. Here was a boy who felt so inhibited by his blindness that he could do nothing again, and here he was, doing the flying trapeze, you know, fantastic. What was very interesting, of course, was that was followed by the other teenagers who put um, blindfolds on and then did exactly what he did. Absolutely amazing. So we have parents who, um, who would say to us uh, that they dropped off their sick child at Barrettstown and 10 days later they collected their old child back again. And that's the magic of the place.